recording this thing, this series. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Those that are late, nevertheless. You know, when you said yes to Jesus Christ, this is how I get my messages. I get excited. Ephesians 2, 6 says, we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God has raised us with Christ. He set us. We are in a place called Christ. That is where we are. The plan of the enemy is to move us out of this place called Christ, right? You are already there. He might use your sister. He might use your brother. He might use your husband. He might use your wife. He might use your mother. He might use a small house. He might use anybody. He is trying to get you out. He's trying to get you offended. He might use an usher at the church. He might even use a pastor. He might use anything. His motive is to get you out of that place. Glory to God. Because outside that place called Christ, you don't have authority. But in that place called Christ, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Yeah, it is the power of Christ. In Christ, I am strong. Glory to God. So when I'm fighting, I'm fighting from Christ. I'm not fighting from a generational case. I'm not fighting because I'm part of this household. I, I refuse to identify with the Sizibas. I identify with Christ Jesus. That's my identity. That is where I come from. That is my place. That is where I am. So what I need now, what I need is the ability to function in that place. As I function in that place, I operate in a, a greater realm of glory, more powerful than the devil. Glory to God. So I have to remain strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The enemy will use finances to move you out. He will use worry to move you out because he understands that as long as you know who you are in Christ Jesus, you will not be moved. You will not be shaken. So let's take this opportunity to begin to pray. We are praying for ourselves right now. That Father, you have planted us in Christ. Spirit of the living God, here we are. We are united with Christ Jesus. We are praying, Father God, for the power of the Holy Spirit to operate mightily in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We are coming against the spirit of darkness, Lord, all over our household in the name of Jesus. We are declaring your love, your peace, your joy in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, we thank you, Father God, that we refuse to be moved. We refuse to be shaken. In Jesus' mighty name, glory to God, you are strengthened with might. In the mighty name of Jesus, you belong to Jesus. You are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God has chosen you in him before the foundation of this world to be holy and to be blameless. That is who we are. We are equipped with the power of the Holy Spirit. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you praise for who you are. Glory to God. We give you praise because you are worthy all the praise. You are worthy all the glory. You are worthy all the adoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Lombros. Spirit of the living God, we love you. We appreciate you. There is no one like you in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Well, Welcome to our Bible study, those that are joining us now. We have been praying from Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. I'm reading from the Amplified. Uh, we identified something so powerful and wonderful from the Amplified. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God. You know, this, this word is loaded with everything. Therefore, put on. Take note. It doesn't say pray. Lord, help me. No, put on it's an instruction. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God so that, so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day. 
right? So that you will be able, right? It says you will be able. You will be able. You will be able. So we are able. Glory to God. This is awesome. So what do we say? When we are praying, when we are interceding, Lord, we agree with that, what the word of God says. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are putting on the whole armor of God. We thank you, Father, for what your word says. We are well able to stand. Yes, we are well able to stand. So if you have been discouraged, you've been facing discouragement, you begin to come against that discouragement. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you've been facing any thoughts of worry, any thoughts of doubt, you begin to say, Father, I thank you. The whole arm of God, right? So doubt is in the mind. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for that helmet of salvation. I thank you for what Jesus has done in the cross in Calvary. Thank you, Father, for that precious blood of Jesus. It is more powerful than sin. I lift up what Christ has done. Yes, Lord, the devil has the blood. You begin to lift up that precious blood of Jesus. Father, it is but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. We give you praise for that precious blood of Jesus. Upon our families, we thank you, Father God, that the blood of Jesus is powerful. It is powerful. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Father, for what Christ has done in the mighty name of Jesus. And you begin to lift up the name of Jesus. It the mission of Jesus, every knee shall bow down. He is that helmet of salvation. So thank you, Father God, for the entire armor of God. We give you praise that Lord God is all about Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Doyala kam skele broko toloko ho. Das keste rababosa katarabaka shende. Dala kam skele broko toloko om skele braka shika. Dayala kam skele broko toloko om skele braka hand. Das keste rababosa katarabaka shende. Lombro skele in Jesus mighty name glory to God right we are praying for uh, we are praying for ourselves right there is something that we saw there like, let's go deeper let's go into the word of God so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day and having done everything having done everything that the crisis demands listen to what he says these are the instructions to stand firm to stand firm right the amplified way we were, those that joined late, to stand firm in your place, in your place, in your place, fully prepared. We said, as a father, you stand firm in that place. As an auntie, you stand firm in that place. As a mother, you stand firm. You see, the, 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 the roles that God has given you in that place in Christ, we said that Christ is the place, right? You stand firm there. You stand firm. Realizing you're not wrestling against, you're not wrestling against your husband, you're not wrestling against your wife, you're not wrestling against your sister, you're not wrestling against your mother-in-law, you're not wrestling against, it is against principalities, right? But you have been given a position so stand in your place, right? Fully prepared in that position that God has given you. You stand. Glory to God. You stand because power and authority is in the position that God has given you. Glory to God. Police officer, he has a position. He has authority on the road. He can stop a car just lifting up the hand. The car will stop because of that authority. Now, when he's talking about the place in your place, we have a place in Christ. The enemy is trying to get us out of that place. When he gets us out of that place, that's when he moves in. But when we are in position in our place, we are unmovable, immovable, unshakable. <laughs> so we were praying that Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are assuming our position, those areas where you have placed whether Lord as a husband, as a father, as a mother, Lord God, I thank you that you have given me authority to raise up godly children. You have given me authority, Father God, to be the husband you have called me to be, to be the brother you have called me to be, to be the sister you have called me to be, to be the mother you have called me to be. Right now, today, I align myself in that place, in that position, in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare, Father God, 
that, that is, I align myself that the anointing of the Holy Spirit is working mightily through me in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak for your power. I speak for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. <laughs> Verse 14 of Ephesians chapter 6. So stand firm and hold your crown. Stand firm and hold your crown. Having tightened the wide band of truth, which is uh, the word of God, right? We looked at this, right? Um, um, around your waist and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having strapped your feet with the gospel of peace in preparation to face the enemy with firm-footed stability and the readiness produced readiness produced by the good news. What do you hear? The readiness produced by the good news. What is the good news? You have been accepted in the beloved. What is the good news? All authority and power has been given unto us in the name of Jesus. What is the good news? We are united with Christ Jesus. What is the good news? We have been translated from the dominion of darkness to the kingdom of light. What is the good news? We belong to God. We are his. We are the sheep of his pasture. What is the good news? He has equipped us with the Holy Spirit. Spirit. What is the good news? Every armor there that he has mentioned, the helmet of salvation, it is available. That breastplate of righteousness, it is a free gift that he has given us. So what we do, we claim that which belongs to us. We come against that spirit of condemnation in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that Father God, you have given us power and authority to bring about change, to bring about transformation in our households, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we are praying for unity in marriage. Oh, Father, we give you praise. We give you glory for who you are in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Glorious things are spoken of the O city of God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Welcome to our live Bible study. You know, this month is, um, is the month where we've been focusing on the family, right? I've been leading intercession um, from Ephesians chapter 6, from verse 10. Just read uh, from verse 10 to verse 18. There. It, will, it will bless you. Glory to God. It will bless you. You see, we have to learn how to pray prayers that are prescribed by the bible especially when we are dealing with family god is for family he wants people to be saved he wants your family to be saved but we need to understand who we are we in our families god has positioned us there to bring a change to bring a transformation you know my grandmother just to tell you a story my grandmother the family that adopted her, nearly all of them became christians when he entered into that family. They did not know the Lord, but they all became Christians before she departed this world. You know, when she entered that family, she brought a change in that family. See, when we are talking about fighting for the family, you know, sometimes we, we, we are looking at carnal things. It is time for us as God's children to rise up. There is a heaven, there is a hell, glory to God. And the number one thing that God wants us to do is to bring change. Do you know if you can bring somebody over to Christ, Bring them over to Christ. What do you think will happen? When we bring people over to Christ, you have one somebody that can help you to fight the battles. There are battles to be fought. Glory to God. We have battles that we ought to fight in our families. There are battles to be fought. And you and me have been placed in those families. No, God doesn't make mistakes. Strategically, he blessed us there to bring about a change, to bring about a transformation. You are the Joseph of your family. Glory to God. You are the Joseph of your family. See yourself as the solution, right? See yourself as the solution. In that household, see yourself as the solution. That it, it doesn't matter what is happening. You are not fighting against flesh nor blood. No, 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 no. It is against principalities. Yeah. It's against powers. These are the things that we are fighting against. But, but, we have an entire armor of God. We have an entire armor of God. We have to put it on, glory to God. We have to put it on and say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your wisdom. What to do, how to go about it. 
So this is what I want to talk about today in the name of Jesus. How do we win our family members to Christ? How do we cooperate with what has already been done? Glory to God. How do we do so, right? So I will try really to continue from the message that we had on Sunday. It was a wonderful message, but um, I'll just add some few scriptures there and there. You know, I'll just add some few scriptures um, and elaborate further what we were talking about. John 16 from verse uh, 8. Glory to God. John 16 from verse 8. And he, when he comes, that's the Holy Spirit, right? He, when he comes, will convict the world about the guilt of sin and the need of a savior, right? He will convict the world and the need of a savior. Who will do so? The Holy Spirit will do that. Glory to God. It is not you. It is not me. That is to convict people. It is the Holy Spirit that will do that. You see, unless we understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the family, we are going to struggle, right? We have to realize that it is not the husband that will try to preach to the wife now to try and get the wife to be saved. Mm -mm. You know, it's not the wife, again, that will try to preach to the husband. If I show him leadership, if I, do, if I put a, a devotional on his Bible, then you only when the Holy Spirit said put it there. You see, if I put that devotional on top of the newspaper, then you will pick up the devotional and you will be saved. No, it does not work that way. Glory to God. It works through the Holy Spirit. You have to understand your place, your position. The Holy Spirit will convict the world. It is the Holy Spirit that will bring change. It is the Holy Spirit that will bring transformation. Our responsibility now as God's children in whatever household he has placed us in is to assume our position our place, glory to God. In that position that God has given us, we have power, we have authority, right? If we are outside alignment in that position, we no longer have power, right? We no longer have power for the Holy Spirit to operate through us, right? We have been discussing this on, on, on Sunday. This is what we were talking about, like uh, how my mother placed herself under uh, Mangena, right? She was under that woman, for a reason, for a purpose. That woman had an anointing. She needed to win her family to the Lord. Her family were not saved. But that woman, she was anointed. Her children were saving the Lord. Glory to God. So the anointing of the Holy Spirit was upon her. Since the anointing of the Holy Spirit was upon that woman, when she positioned herself under it, the same grace that was at work in her life is the same grace that started working in my mother's life. All she saw was children that were playing guitar at church. All she saw was children that were obedient when they were told, pick up your stuff and go. <laughs> we never picked up our stuff and go. If people would come in our house wanting to pray and I was sleeping, I was not going to wake up. That's how stubborn I was. But when she saw the children that were obedient to the mother, they did everything that they needed to do. She placed herself under that. Then the anointing started operating in her life. God started picking up her children one by one. But how? She was in position. She was in her place. Glory to God. As a mother, she had authority. Wherever you are as a child of God, you have authority. The enemy wants to move you outside your alignment, outside that position that God has placed you in. Yet in that position, there lies the power to bring a change, a transformation in your entire family, right? You can bring a change in your entire family because light is more powerful than darkness. But to bring this change in your family, you need to know it is not you that convicts the world of sin. It is the Holy Spirit. You cannot change a person. That's where many people struggle in families. You, you, you try to change people. You, try, you, see, you will be coming from a position, if I say this, they will change. Now, if I do this, they will change. I, I need to convict them. I, I need to tell them this. No, you need to be in position, right? You need to be in that position that God has given you, loving them, right? Understanding the message, understanding who you are in Christ, understanding the gospel, glory to God, understanding that, listen, I am not the Holy Spirit. I am not the one that has to, to try and push Christ. You know, when you try to push people, when you try to push Christ to people, what happens? People rebel. When you try to, I, I'm going to tell, I'm, I, 
I'm really going to tell them, you, you know, I'm really going to tell them, you know, you, you, you try to manipulate, to connive, you, 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 you even come from, from an angle, a certain angle, if I say this, no, it's the Holy Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit, listen, I want to take it again, I want you to see this, when he, when he comes, he will convict the world about the guilt of sin, see, the Holy Spirit will do that, hallelujah, it's not our responsibility, now, as uh, those that God has sent to pray for me were praying, 2000, is it, at 1999, when I came into this country, I met a gentleman by the name of Kwame. Kwame was a Canadian uh, man that, you know, I was a young man then. He was a Canadian young man. He evangelized to me on the bus, but there were people that were praying. My mother was praying, but God sent somebody. You see, when you are praying, sometimes it is not you that is going to reap the harvest. But you need to know how. It's not you that is going to actually be the one that will minister to that person. No, God might send somebody out in the field to minister to the one that you want to be saved. Right? It might be your husband. Sometimes it's not you. Glory to God. Your responsibility might be to pray. It is not your responsibility. You are trying to push. I'm pushing the gospel. Mm -mm. It will not work. So when I met Kwame, Kwame started telling me about Jesus. That is in 1998. He came to where I was living. We prayed with Kwame. We walked with Kwame. And Kwame disappeared. All of a sudden, I did not see Kwame for a very, very long, long time. You see, that is important for us to understand. That when you are praying, you see, you need to understand how to pray. Let's go to second. Um, of Corinthians uh, 4, verse, um, verse 3, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3. Okay, let me, I want to remain here in my, on my phone. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 4, 3, right? 2 Corinthians 4, 3. And even if our gospel is veiled, or even if our gospel is hidden, it is hidden to those who are perishing. It says the gospel, which is the good news, right? It is hidden to those that are what? Are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. It says the God of this world. Who is the God of this world? It's the devil. So our responsibility then as brothers, as sisters, as mothers, our responsibility is to understand that God wants people to be saved. God wants marriages to be restored. He wants children to be saved. He wants parents to be saved. He wants people in your household to be saved more than you want them to be saved. That's why he sent Jesus. That's why Jesus died on the cross, right? So the ministry of the Holy Spirit through us is to come against the God of this world. That is the devil, right? The devil has blinded people. You see, I was blind. I did not know <laughs> anything about Jesus. But you see, as people were praying for me, God was moving people around me, right? So when you are praying for somebody who is in darkness, it's very, very important. Number one, you are not the one to convict them. It's the Holy Spirit. Number two, the God of this world, that is the devil. He has blinded them. So those people are blind. So your responsibility is this, Stand in your place as the light, right? Stand your ground as the light. And then you begin to speak words of power, words of authority over those people. You begin to rebuke darkness. You know, you start speaking to the darkness that surrounds them. That's how you cooperate with the Holy Spirit. What do people do? What do people do? They do these things religious. Father, if you could save them, oh, Father, you know, we, we start fasting. We are begging heaven. We are begging God to get God to... to, to, to to save them. Mm -mm. God wants them to be saved, right? That's why he sent Jesus. Romans 5, 8. God demonstrate his love in this while, while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Christ died for ungodly people. Second Peter 3, verse 9 says, God is patient. He is not willing that any should perish, right? But what God is doing through you and me is when we are in our positions, as we begin to pray, as we begin to intercede, coming against the spirit of darkness in their life, coming against the spirit of darkness, we have to begin to pray for what? For divine connections that God will send Kwame's 
in their lives. There's something I wanted to say when I was uh, interviewing my mother on, um, on Sunday. What I wanted to talk about really was the parents. I, I touched on it, but I did not elaborate faith. I said, listen, when God connected Mangena with my mother, there was a praying mother behind. There was also a father who was doing something in the community. You see, my grandfather grew up, uh, my, my, my grandfather, my grandparents lived in a place where there was, there was tribalism. It was bad. It was during the days of Zanu and Zabu, right? My grandfather could have been bitter. He was arrested a number of times, placed in prison for things that he did not do. He was beaten up a number of times, but there was no bitterness in him. He saved his community, right? He, he, he aligned himself. That's the position I'm talking about. He did not allow unforgiveness to come into his heart, right? He did not allow bitterness to come into his heart. He continued doing what was good in that community. This is what the Lord brought to me. See, he continued doing what was good in that community, right? At the same time, my grandma was the same. She continued praying, praying in tongues, right? What happened? Their daughter in another city gets connected with somebody else. See, imagine if they moved into bitterness. Imagine if they moved into unforgiveness. Imagine if they stopped serving the community. See, the plan of the enemy is this. He wants to move you outside your alignment. When he moves you outside your alignment, you no longer have authority over your children. Since you no longer have authority over your children, instead of this divine connection, then there is demonic connections, right? There are some people, you find yourself, you are connected to the wrong people. You, you wonder how can they be connected to the wrong people? Sometimes it's because the parents have not been in alignment. They've not been sowing the right seeds. Glory to God. They have not been sowing the right seeds, right? When you, as a parent here, you are sowing the right seed. You are praying. You refuse. Listen, let's go deeper. Glory to God. We, we, we need to go deeper here. Anything that the, happens in your life, whether at work, in your marriage, with your in-laws, you know, whether you are driving with anybody, it seeks to move you out of position. It is to move you out. See, when the enemy was working through the politics, political system of Zimbabwe, was seeking to move my parents out, right? My, my grandparents out, wanted to get them into bitterness, unforgiveness. When you operate in unforgiveness, bitterness, you no longer have authority. You no longer have power over your children. The Holy Spirit cannot operate fully. Right, let's go deeper. Let's go to Ephesians 4. Glory to God. Let's go to Ephesians 4 from verse um, 28. Let's start from 28. <laughs> is it 28 or 29? Amplified, right? Oh, Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> right, let's start from 30. Right. <laughs> and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Do not offend or vex or sadden him. The word grieve here is the Greek word lupete. Right, this word grief, lupete, picture a, a spouse, right, who has found out that the other spouse has been unfaithful, right? The pain that they go through when you discover somebody has been cheating on you, that's the word that they use. It says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, do not offend or vex or sadden him by whom you were sealed marked, branded as God's own, secured for the day of redemption, of final deliverance through Christ from the evil and consequences of sin, right? Let, 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 let's go deeper. What I was talking about, verse 31, right? Let all bitterness and indignation and wrath, which is anger, right? Quarreling, blah, 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 right? But what I want us to talk about is let all bitterness or unforgiveness. Let all bitterness or unforgiveness be upon you. Because unforgiveness and bitterness or ungodly anger or slander, it grieves the Holy Spirit. Right? The reason why he says, do not grieve him. The Holy Spirit is inside of us. He wants to win people. He wants to use you to win people. Right? He wants to be 
to be revealed through you. He wants you to be now Emangena to somebody else. He wants you to be Jesus to somebody else. He wants you to be Peter to somebody else. But when you are now Peter, he is grieved. He can no longer operate through you. You no longer have power. You no longer have authority. This is what I'm talking about, right? Right. So when he says, do not grieve him, he gets grieved when we are bitter. Now, so anything that happens to you, any challenges that you face, whether in your marriage, whether it's coming from your spouse, whether it's coming from your children, whether it's coming from your sisters or your brothers, whether it's coming from your, your, the people you work with, it's seeking for you to be bitter, to be unforgiving, to operate in ungodly anger. Because as you do so, you are thinking of the now, the present moment, but you are not thinking of the future. You're not thinking of your authority. There is an enemy that you are fighting, right? We wrestle not against flesh nor blood, but it's against principality, right? That's what Paul says in Ephesians 6. So you are not fighting people. So if I'm the devil, if I'm the devil, I will use the political system to get you out, to get you beat. Because I want you to think it's about politics. I want you to think it's about what your husband is doing. The devil is a generational devil, right? He will use your present now to destroy that which is for you in the future. And because the Holy Spirit also thinks generationally, right? He gets grieved because he can no longer function through you. Now he is on the inside of you, but there is so much pain. There is so much, there is so much pain in him. He is feeling pain. He is vexed because he can't flow. You are focusing on what the husband did. Well, he, he cheated on me. Now you operate in unforgiveness. You are focusing on what the small house did. Oh, you, you know, she, she took away my husband. You are now operating in unforgiveness. But you don't see the, the authority, the power that you might have if you forgive them. You don't see the power, the authority that you have if you let go. Let's go deeper. Let me connect it for you. You know, the Bible is like a jigsaw. Everything is connected, right? Let's go to Mark 11, verse 22, right? This is powerful, right? What is it to do with the winning people? We shall find out. And we will connect the dots. Verse 22. Remember, Jesus said, "Cast the fig tree, right? He cast the fig tree because they could not, he could not produce any fruit. Now, the disciples, they come, they see the fig tree is with that. And Jesus replying, said to them, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Truly, I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, why? Because they have faith in God. They are in their position, right? Having faith in God, now in the New Testament, is to operate in the spirit. Glory to God. So in other words, walk in the spirit. That's what Jesus is telling them. Walk in the spirit. Because when you walk in the spirit, this is what you are going to do. <laughs> Let's go deeper. Whosoever says to this mountain, mountain, children that are not saved, mountain, debt, because sometimes when you're in debt, you start fighting husband and wife, they are fighting because, you know, things are not good in the family, right? <laughs> mountain, children that are misbehaving, mountain, spouse that is playing outside the home or not in alignment, that's a mountain, right? Right. Whosoever shall say, because you what? You are walking in the spirit. You are not grieving the spirit. Now you have authority, you have power. So you can now speak to the spirit of darkness that I was talking about in 2 Corinthians 4, 3. You can't speak to the spirit of darkness if you don't have faith in God, if you're not walking in the spirit. If the Holy Spirit inside of you is grieved, you are bitter, then you speak to them. How? It will not work. Glory to God. So now let's go deeper. So if you say to this mountain, be lifted up, thrown into the sea, does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says will take place, it will be done for him. It will be done for him. It's not me who said this. It is Jesus. Right? But Jesus qualifies this. He qualifies this in two verses. Sometimes we read the scripture in isolation. We take our speak to the mountain, then you are speaking to the mountain, and the mountain is not moving. For this reason, I'm telling you, whatever whatever. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you, you will get it. Why? I'm walking in the spirit. I'm not grieving the spirit. What else am I doing? 
I'm not begging God to speak to the mountains in my family. No, 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 no. I am now speaking to the mountain. I'm now operating in the authority that God has given me, right? I'm speaking. I'm releasing the law of spirit of life over my family. People don't know these things, right? They are begging God and God saying, you speak to the mountain of darkness. You don't operate in bitterness. Don't operate in unforgiveness. The enemy is trying to grieve the spirit on the inside of you. Mature, grow up, then you will move darkness. Light is powerful than darkness. What did God say? In the beginning, God created heavens and earth, right? The earth was void, right? In the family, things might be void. Things might be bad, right? The earth was formless. There was darkness. What did God say? Let there be light. He spoke what he wanted to say. This is what he's saying, right? For this reason, because you have faith in God, you are speaking to the mountain. I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that it is granted to you. You will get it. Now, verse 25, where I was going. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. If you have anything against anyone, forgive him. Let it drop. Leave it. Let it go. <laughs> Glory to God. This is what it says. In order that your father who is in heaven may also forgive you your own failings and shortcomings let them drop what is jesus talking about right verse 26 if you do not forgive neither will your father in heaven forgive your failings and shortcomings now jesus as he says this he's saying it before he goes to the cross right forgiveness is in christ jesus let me qualify what i'm talking about here right you say when you have unforgiveness inside of you because of the political system there you don't realize you have allowed. See, how do I explain this? Remember, God is a generational God. He thinks generational, right? And the devil also thinks generational. That's where we get generational blessings and generational curses, right? God, for us Christians, he has given us a generational blessing in Christ. Ephesians 1, 3, right? The plan of the enemy is to enter into your, can I say, genealogy or into your lineage, right? He wants to come through your lineage. So he's going to shake whoever he wants to shake, right? As I was talking about my mother, he was trying to shake my grandparents to move them into a place of bitterness. Because when they open that door of bitterness, they are opening the door for the enemy. The thief comes to steal, kill, and, and destroy, right? So he will use whoever he wants to use. When that person is allowed to be used by the devil, what they do is they are no longer in their position. They are no longer in their place. They have lost authority to pray for their children. So the children, meanwhile, because they have opened up that portal, they also now are exposed to this thing. That's why the Holy Spirit is grieved. Glory to God. This is what many people are dealing with in families. Somebody opened the door for the enemy to come in. And they have not been taught what I'm teaching you right now. So now you that know these things, when you understand that you are in Christ, glory to God, you are in this position, then you need to start helping them. You need to start praying for them, interceding for them. About two, three years ago, my, aunt, my uncle, you know, was uh, sick. He was in the hospital. He had collapsed, you know, sick unto death, right? So I, I always, when I was at work, there's a place where I used to go and pray, you know. So I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray. I'm about to open the door to go. And the Holy Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, reminded me that you have not prayed for your uncle. You know, he's in a coma, he's in a hospital. You have not prayed for him, right? We had nothing in common with my uncle, right? See, you have not prayed for him. I will not go deeper into that, right? I went back. I shut the door. As I was about to pray, the Holy Spirit gave me instruction. Send a preacher to preach salvation to him. Send a preacher. Imagine, if I was bitter against my uncle, I could have allowed what was in my uncle, my father's household, to come to me. 
right? But because I loved him so much to pray for him. So then the preacher, I said, the preacher could not go on time. But when the preacher went, the man gave his life to Jesus Christ. He was walking everything. They thought he was going to be discharged for home on, on, on Monday. Saturday, he died. Saturday, he died. We were wondering what happened, right? The preacher went, he gave his life to Jesus. So we were praying, so is he in heaven? Somebody in the family had a dream. There was a party thrown in heaven for him. See, they had that vivid dream. So what am I talking about? Bitterness. You see, if I was bitter towards my uncle, if I was bitter, you see, that's how the enemy operates in families. Bitterness, unforgiveness. Then you say, oh, generational cases. They are bothered. No. Glory to God. When the door has been opened, somebody in the family needs to shut the door by standing in line with the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. When you align yourself with the Holy Spirit, that door that was opened by a grandparent, that was opened by a father, that was opened by anybody, now you have the authority to speak to it. That's what Jesus came to do. He came to bless us. He came to release a blessing. Right? That's what the devil wants to do through people, through small houses, <laughs> glory to through people that will destroy marriages, through people that will come in, they cause you pain. He wants you to revenge. He wants you to be to operate in ungodly anger. He wants strife to be in your house. That is the plan and strategy of the enemy. That's what he is doing, even in, in marriage. You get angry with your with your husband, right? Then you come out of alignment. <laughs> oh, you think I can submit to this? Now you are operating in bitterness. The Holy Spirit can no longer work through you, right? Because now you have come out of alignment. The husband gets angry with the wife. You know, how can she do this? How can she talk this to me? Now, what's happening? Bitterness, unforgiveness, right? Ungodly anger. Is the Holy Spirit operating? No, you have come out of placement. The enemy just used the wife. The enemy just used the husband. The enemy just used grandparents. The enemy just used people to get you outside alignment. Now you are operating in unforgiveness. The Holy Spirit cannot work. No. Then there are others <laughs> that do not know these things, right? You, 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 you are religious, right? You, you, you want to change people. You want to tell them. There is a certain way that my, my grandfather, my grandmother spoke to me. When she will see me drinking, she will look at me and take that. Says, my, my, my son, you really love your alcohol. You see, when you are drinking it, when you are lifting it up like this, you are not like telling God, and I'm not coming there. She will say that and she will stop with it. Those words, I'm telling you, they continued ministering to me long after they've been saved. That's how gentle she was. Because the Holy Spirit works through love. Hallelujah. So imagine if you, how you and your alcohol, you know, you will get to hell. You will be like this. You will be, there are some that minister that way. You won't win people. There are some parents, you want to tell your teenage children, yeah, I, I will tell them, me, I, I will fire them. I will do, them. it will not work. Glory to God. They will go the opposite direction. Right? The only way is, let the Holy Spirit do that. Because as you do so, you as a parent, you end up kissing them. There are some words that sometimes parents re release over their children because their children are rebellious. You don't realize that as you release those words upon them, it is not God that is kissing them. It is not the devil that is kissing them. Somebody once said, says, so they saw the devil approaching the throne room of God in heaven, crying. Says, oh, and God was saying, what is the problem, Lucifer? What is the problem? Says your children, they are blaming me for their own ignorance. They are blaming me for, you know, the things that I have not done, they say I've done them, right? Listen, the devil has been defeated. The devil has been judged. We have been given authority. Glory to God. That's why Jesus says, whosoever shall say to this mountain, right? When you try to force people to change, when you try, you will operate outside the alignment. It's no longer God now working through you. It is your strength. Then salvation, it's no longer grace, <laughs> right? It is now you. So you are trying to change people. No, you cannot change a person. I had T.D. Jakes who was preaching one day when I became a believer, you know. He said, there are two that can change a person. He says, one is God, 
two is a witch. <laughs> which one are you? <laughs> right? That was his question. He says, which one are you? I thought about it. He said, there are two that can change. A person, God or a witch, which one are you? See, our responsibility is to speak words of God over our children, words of God over our spouses, words of God over our parents, is to come against the spirit of darkness. When we find ourselves, we have walked in unforgiveness, bitterness, because of what they have done. We have to come back and ask God, God, help us. Sometimes you are struggling. You are here, says, I hear you, but I'm struggling because of what my husband has done. I'm struggling because of what my parents have done. I'm struggling. You see, that's when you have to ask God to help you. You cannot continue in the same lane and expect a change. There will be no change. Glory to God. There can never be any change. Change comes when you come into place, man, aligning yourself with God, you know, joining forces with God, realizing that God wants our families to be saved. Second Corinthians 5. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Second Corinthians 5, verse... Uh, <clears throat> oh, yes, Lord God. Verse 18, right? Verse 18, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. It says God has given us the ministry of reconciliation, right? I like the King James because where I'm reading, it's not the King James, it's another version. It says God was in Christ reconciling the world. Actually, it's this, verse 19. Let's go deeper in verse 19. Glory to God. That God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Go to 19. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself. In Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself. This is a powerful text. I want you to get it. Not counting their trespasses against them. It says, in Christ, God was reconciling the world. Not counting. Right? If you do not know the message of Jesus Christ, what will you be doing? You are counting your husband's sins against him. You are counting your children's sins against them. You are counting your wife's sins against him. You are, you, are, you, you, you are even going to the pastor, right? You want pastor to pray, pray, pray for my husband. He drinks, he does this, he does that. You already, you are counting sins. Me, no man. Those that know me, I don't pray. I start teaching people this thing. Because the moment you see him as a drinker, how can you then pray? You are already counting their sins against them. What do you see? That you always speak what you see. Mark 11, 22. Have faith in God. Do you see a man of God? Glory to God. Do you see a woman of God? What do you see? What do you see with your children? If you are counting to count their sins, right? It says God was in Christ, not counting. God is not counting Pastor Long's sins against him. God is not counting your sins against you. So if God is not counting, that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. If what you see, you see sin in people, how do you bring them to God? How do you win your family to God? Glory to God. You see, it's very important to have faith in God, to understand walking in the Spirit, not grieving the Holy Spirit. Let's go deeper in this scripture. Um, not counting their trespasses against them. And entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. It says he has given us the message of reconciliation. He has given it to us. Now, let's round up. So imagine if my grandfather had gotten bitter, if my grandmother had gotten bitter, moved out of alignment, would there be a connection between my mother and Mange? Sometimes maybe, sometimes not. You see, it matters what we do as parents when we refuse to operate in bitterness. It matters what we do as parents when we refuse to operate in unforgiveness. It matters what we do as spouses when we stand in alignment. It gives us authority. It gives us power. Glory to God. That despite what people are saying, what they are doing, when we stand firm, we are cooperating with the ministry of reconciliation. What is God's agenda in all this? He wants everybody to be saved. He wants your family members to be saved and he wants to use you. He's not going to work in a vacuum. He used a man game. And after that, my mother had authority over my life. 
Glory to God. She had authority over my life. Glory to God. She had to speak to darkness. What the heck? Darkness moved out of my life. Let me tell you something as I round up with the testimony. About 2000, uh, I had cable in this house. Yeah. And then my wife was here. She used to watch uh, TBN, right, which is a Christian channel. She used to watch it. Every time I would come in the house, I would tell you, oh, why are you putting that here? I did not put television to watch these Christian things. I put it for, for Arsenal, Arsenal fan. I put it for Arsenal. I did not put it for this. I would harass it. But you know what she did? She was giving five pounds to that television channel all the time. She was, I didn't know about this. She was giving five pounds. Guess what? 2004, when my mother took that broom and swept the devil here, when I went to Zimbabwe and my Gena laid the hands on me, when my sister started praying for me, I came in this living room as I was going through the flipping through the television channel. My fingers froze. My fingers froze. TBN. That is the channel that I was watching. That evening, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. She was so. She never preached to me. She never pressured to me. You ought to go to church. You ought to do this and that. No, she continued in secret partnering with the TBA. What happened? The same television channel. I was telling you not to watch. The same television channel that the husband gave his life to Christ. Watching. Don't try to manipulate and connive and force people into submission to the Lord. No, do your part. Stand the fame, glory to God. Don't allow bitterness. Don't la- allow unforgiveness. Stand the fame. As you do so, salvation will come into the household. You will begin to fight the good fight of faith. You will win, glory to God. God is for you. Remember, remember, God wants people to be saved more than you want them to be saved. God wants restoration more than you want restoration. Now, to those, maybe you, you are a mother-in-law, you, are, you, you, you have seen maybe a son abusing your own daughter, or you, you know those relationships, or maybe you are an in-law. What are you saying? Don't release words to curse your son-in-law or your daughter-in-law. Release words of blessing. Treat that one as your own son is a special project to you because the enemy wants to move you out, especially if you are, it's always mothers, you know, he wants to move you out of alignment. Those that are not yet with their in-laws, learn this principle now, learn this principle now. I know someone who died of a car accident, right? How did they die? They had a problem with the, the lady that they were married with. And they spoke to the man of that lady. The mother was not having it. But eventually they divorced. The mother was always saying bad stuff about this gentleman. He had a car accident. He was promoted to go and work somewhere. He had a car accident. He died on the spot. You see, God wants to use us to fight for him. Why can't you fight for somebody else's son, even though they might be abusing your own daughter? Why can't you fight for somebody else's daughter, even though they might be abusing your own son? Why can't you do that? You know, Christ is on the inside of you. He lives on the inside of you. Have that heart of Christ on the inside of you. Fight the good fight of faith. Glory to God. Fight for your family. Fight for people that don't belong to your household. People that are causing you grief. Let them go. As you do so, what will happen? It will be a generational blessing. You will never be under any generational case. You will be blessed beyond measure. I'm your host. Pastor Lord, I endorse this message. Till we meet again, we have something special for this Sunday. It's going to be glorious. It's going to be wonderful. God is going to bless us. He's going to do something great, something phenomenal. I cannot wait for what he has for us this Sunday. So please join in this Sunday. God is doing something great through Open Door Christ Center. You are tremendously blessed. Let me just pray for you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for every person that has joined in today. Lord, the beggar is on against families, but Lord, you have equipped us with the Holy Spirit to stand firm and to fight the good fight of faith. We thank you that you are a good God. You are a loving father. You are a generous God, and you desire that all men will come into repentance. Father, I pray for those that, Lord, do not have sisters that are saved or brothers that are saved. They don't have anybody to stand with them in faith and fight. Lord, 
your word says your grace is sufficient. Your strength is made perfect in weakness. Lord, I pray that your grace be evident in their lives. Your grace be evident in their lives. That they will rise up and begin to fight for their families. Father, I come against the spirit of strife in the household. I come against the spirit of bitterness. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I come against the spirit of unforgiveness. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, portals that have been opened by grandparents, that have been opened by parents. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, under the sound of my voice, every person listening tonight, Lord, I shut those portals in Jesus' mighty name. I speak for a generational blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus, the spirit of divorce that has been running havoc in household, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I come against it in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray, Father God, for unity in household. Unity, Lord, I arrest every demonic entity, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Come forward. We have declared that this is a month of families. So we are praying, Father God, not just, Lord, for families, Lord, things that have kept people in poverty, things that have held on to people's financial breakthroughs right now, Father, things that have kept people in stagnation in the mighty name of Jesus. We break them in Jesus' mighty name. We are praying, Father God, for an overflow anointing, overflow in every area of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Don't be Peter. Rise up. There is power and authority in the name of Jesus. You are blessed. Till we meet again, I'm your host, Pastor Long. Have a wonderful evening.